I was 14 years old, and my mom and I had been living in a three-bedroom double-wide trailer ever since we left my dad. My mom worked a full-time job, which meant that from Monday to Friday, I would have the house for myself for about two hours after getting home from school and before she got home from work. I usually would spend my time on my computer or working on writing my D&D campaign, and in no time at all, my mom would be home. At least, that was when I felt comfortable in my house. That all changed, though. One day when I found myself walking in on a burglary in progress. I had just gotten home from school, and when I walked into my house, everything seemed normal. I walked inside and locked the door behind me before taking my shoes off. And as I was in the process of taking off my shoes, I could have sworn I heard something come from the room where we used to store our moving boxes in the back of the trailer. At first, I assumed it was just a box or the house settling, and I didn't pay the noise any mind. But before I could even stand up from taking my shoes off, I heard it again. This time it worried me a bit, so I decided to call out to see if my mom had come home early. But when I yelled out, there was no response. Still something felt a bit odd to me, so I decided to check the room out real quick before getting comfortable. I poked my head through the door and looked around, but from what I could tell, nothing had changed, which reassured me that I had in fact heard the house settling. After that, I went about my normal routine. I stepped into my room and put my backpack on my bed before walking back out into the kitchen for a quick snack. I reached into the cabinet and pulled out a fruit roll-up, but before I could open it, I heard another sound coming from the back room, only this time it was followed by something that shook me to my core. After the sound of something thumping on the ground in the room, I heard what was undoubtedly a man let out a single cough. I dropped my snack and instinctively began running through the house and toward my bedroom. I'm not sure why I chose my room instead of the front door. Maybe it was where I felt the safest. But either way, I sprinted into my bedroom, which was two doors down from the back room, and without hesitating, I did the only thing I could think of, just like I had seen in movies. I grabbed my wooden desk chair and propped it up against my bedroom door. It was perfect timing too, because as soon as the door was wedged shut, whoever was in my house began banging up against my bedroom door. I fell back in fear and began looking around to think of what I could do next, and that was when I came to my senses. I looked over to my window and saw my escape. I was able to open it up and push the screen out before climbing through it, and since we lived in a trailer, the window were only about five feet off the ground. Once I was out of the house, I quickly ran through my yard and over to my neighbor's house. It only took him a few seconds before he answered the door after I began pounding on it and screaming for help. My neighbor opened the door and I explained to him what was happening. He didn't question it at all, and as soon as he saw the panic in my face, he let me into his house and we both waited there for the police and my mom to arrive home. The police showed up about 30 minutes before my mom did, but it was still too late to catch the intruder. By the time they showed up, he had already left the house. Not before destroying it though, all three of the rooms appeared to be ransacked and my mother's jewelry collection was missing. For a while, I ended up staying at my neighbor's house or a friend's house after school while I waited for my mom to get home. I just wasn't comfortable being alone in my house anymore. I will never forget the first weekend that I had the house to myself, and not for the reasons you probably think. I mean, sure I had a massive party planned, which most likely would have just turned out to be a small hangout session with my friends, but I never reached that point in the weekend. You see, the first night that I had the house to myself, I decided to take it easy and spend most of the time cleaning for the company that I was expecting to come over the following day. I strained up the living room and the bathroom before wiping down all the counters in the kitchen, and by the time I was finally finished, I had worked up a bit of an appetite. I decided to make myself some breakfast for dinner and began making some scrambled eggs and bacon. Then after eating, I noticed that I made a mess with the bacon grease, so once again, I wiped down the counters, which is where I made my biggest mistake. 
After wiping down the counter, I left the towel in the same corner that the stove was in. I didn't think anything of the situation and ended up watching a movie by myself before heading into my room and falling asleep. I don't know how long I was asleep for, but I was woken up as I began choking in my sleep. My eyes shot open and could barely see anything that was around me. My room and the rest of the house had been filled with thick, dark smoke, and by the time I had woken up, there was no telling how much I inhaled. I tried to stand but right away could tell that I was very lightheaded. After managing to sit, I quickly dropped down to my hands and knees and began crawling across the floor underneath the smoke. Crawling on all fours, I made my way out of my bedroom and through the house towards the front door. As I passed by the kitchen, I could see the flickering flames dancing in the corner near the stove. There was nothing I could do at that point, so I just continued to crawl toward the front door. Sadly, by that point, I inhaled too much smoke and everything around me went dark as I began to pass out. I thought I was a goner, but lucky for me, my neighbor had seen the flames from his house. He apparently busted through the door and pulled me out of the house and saved my life. I didn't wake up until I was already in the ambulance and heading toward the hospital. There have been a few times in my life when I barely avoided bad situations. I was kind of wild and on my own for a long time, but that's kind of getting off topic. After having been in so many situations due to bad choices, my gut feeling has never lied to me, so I trust it, even if it makes me feel like a crazy paranoid hermit lady. So, I live with my best friend James, and our work hours are always different from each other, so there's always someone in or out of our house which means that it's pretty hard for robbers or anyone to pin down a schedule. One rule that we've always lived by is that we know who's coming over and when. And so, if it was one of his friends that wanted to come over, they usually won't until he's home, just out of courtesy to each other and I try to do the same. About 10am, I sat down in my living room to have lunch. James is at work and had been since 7.30am and would be until 3 or 4pm. I worked overnights last night and had the day off today. In the middle of my lunch, I hear someone knock three times with what sounds like their fist and then, after a couple of seconds, they ring the doorbell. When you're sitting on my couch, you can actually see the front door from there. And for some reason, I just stared at it. I waited for the screen door to slam shut, giving clues to it being a delivery guy or something. But there was no sound of the door shutting, so I take a moment to try and think of anyone it could be, and my next move is to text James. There was another knock, and it was followed up by the doorbell again. And after another minute, James texts back and says that we unexpected company and inquired if it might be a delivery or something. I knew that it wasn't, and finally the screen door slammed shut, and that let me know that they had at least stepped away. Curious though, I got up to peer out the peephole in the door, and walking up the pathway away from the house is a guy in a, a pink salmon-colored hoodie. It's 85 degrees out, and he has a hoodie on with his hood up, so you can't really see his face. He stops and stands at the end of the pathway and doesn't move. And right there is when I feel the chills creep up my skin. He then turns around and walks back to the door. His head is down so I can't see what the bottom half of his face even looks like. And I can also see that he has what looks like a, a bunch of yellow empty grocery bags in his hand. He rings the doorbell twice and I keep watching him trying to be as silent as possible. He turns and starts walking to the side and... I realize that he's going to the window, so I step back behind the wall of the living room and try to peek out and not be seen. Hello? I want to see your dog. He calls out through the window. Now, I feel really confused and I start texting James everything that's happening. It takes a while for him to respond this time and in the meantime, the guy says, Are you going to let me see your dog or not? 
he's starting to sound like he's becoming agitated and I'm hoping that he just has the wrong address and realizes that soon because we do not have a dog. He taps the window a couple of times and starts making the noises you would to call a dog. By this time, James has texted me back saying that the whole thing sounds sketchy as fuck and just to stay out of view and definitely don't reply and call the cops if he doesn't leave. I nervously look back getting a quick look to see if he's left the window and I just wait a little longer just in case and at this point I'm sitting on the floor with my back against the wall trying to wait this situation out hoping that he's just a nut and will just leave soon. But I start to hear an odd scratching against the glass and it had my adrenaline going as the fear sinks in that this is really creepy and I don't know what he's doing. I try to get a good look and stay out of sight to see that his face was pressed up against the window but his hands are cupped on both sides like you do to see better. And that's when I notice that he had black gloves on and also an exacto knife or whatever those things are called. At this point, I freaked out and start to call the cops when I finally hear a car's engines kick on and another couple seconds and the noise just drifts away. I don't move from where I am and I just contemplate whether or not I should call 911 and I'm an idiot, I know, but I didn't call the police. Instead, I stayed in my room with the door locked until James came home. He stayed outside a minute, finishing his cigarette when he texted me, What's in our garden? We don't actually have a garden, it's just a little planter's bed that we've never really used, but that's what he calls it. And I replied, not sure, been locked inside all day. There was a moment before he texted again and he said, It's a yellow bag. And I said, holy shit, James. I flew down the stairs and out the front door. I walked up to James and my heart stopped. There, in the planter, he used a stick to pull open the bag and inside was a note and orange duct tape. I said to James, practically shaking, that I should have called the cops earlier, but we need to call them now and he replied that he had already called them. We didn't look into the bag any further and just gave it to the police and they asked if we could stay with anyone else tonight. They were reluctant to say why and then after pressing a bit more, they told James that the note had said, I'll come back tonight. And now, we're currently staying at James' mum's house. In the earliest months of 2014, I started dating my current boyfriend. We hit it off immediately, which resulted in me staying at his house multiple nights out of the week. Eventually, I ended up living there, sharing a mobile home with him and his father. The neighborhood itself was fairly creepy, one of those unnamed country areas that branch from a main road. Richard, my boyfriend's dad, would tell me stories about how the entire street was owned by one man, a guy who had gotten old in recent years and let the land go. As a result, the field beside our mobile home was overgrown with weeds and old trees. He also told me about these strange occurrences, of which he attributed to two things, aliens and kids from another neighborhood. Despite his warnings and how creepy the area was, I didn't take him too seriously. After all, his biggest concern was aliens. I was unemployed for a short period of time after moving in, which left me alone in the house while my boyfriend and his dad went to work. I spent most of my days putting in job applications, cleaning up the house, and reading online. I guess you could say that my presence at the house was pretty predictable, which is the only explanation to this occurrence. On a day as unremarkable as any other, while I sat reading a book in my bedroom, I heard a car pull into our driveway. The sound was pretty distinctive, considering the area wasn't paved, but rather made up of gravel. 
thinking that my boyfriend, Cody, had come home early from work. I slipped some shoes on and started for the front door, which was on the other side of the house. Before I could reach it, a knock sounded against the glass. The front of our trailer had a sunroom, basically a front porch that is encased with windows, making it so you had to go through two doors before stepping into the living room. Being as paranoid as he was, Richard would usually lock the sunroom door before leaving for work, unless he was in a huge hurry. Still, thinking that maybe my boyfriend had come home early from work, I opened the front door to let him in. Only it wasn't Cody at the door, but a rather short Hispanic man. He smiled at me through the glass and nodded, almost as if I was exactly who he was expecting to answer. I noticed that he had one hand behind his back, and the other was hanging at his side. I tried not to think too much about it. Beside him, in our carport, was a small white truck, and I could hear that the engine was still running. Um, hey, can I help you? I tried to make my voice as strong as I could, but it only came out shaky. I'm with the garbage company. I'm here to pick up your trash cans. I blinked, knowing immediately that this was a lie. Yes, it was common for the garbage company to come and pick up trash cans if the bill hadn't been paid, but I had gone with Cody the week before to pay it. Not to mention, the drivers never knocked on the door. They would only ever take the cans and leave. I glanced to my left, seeing that our trash cans were still there, on the outside of the sunroom, somewhat behind the house. They're right there. If you need them, then take them. This time, my voice was more assertive, causing my visitor's smile to turn into a frown. May I come in? he asked. I didn't verbally answer. I just shook my head. My heart dropped as I watched him reach up and grab the handle to the glass door, pulling on it to open it. The door clicked, obviously locked. The man tried to pull it again, this time harder, causing the metal to creak. I jumped back into my house and slammed the front door, locking it with purpose. It was so quiet in the house that I only noticed two sounds. My heart pounding and the doorknob to our back door jiggling. There was no way it could have been the guy from the front porch. He wouldn't have had time to get to the back door, even if he ran. I yelled through the door. I'm calling the fucking police, still baffled at the fact that this was all happening in broad daylight. I could hear the truck drive through the carport and into our backyard immediately after that. I took a moment to look through the blinds of a window watching as a separate man jumped off of the back porch and into the passenger seat. To this day, I'm convinced that these men knew I was home alone and carefully planned an attack. One of them was meant to distract me while the other broke into the back door. I still don't know what was hidden behind the back of the guy at the front door. All I can say is that I'm forever thankful of how paranoid my father-in-law is. Who knows what could have happened if he hadn't locked the sunroom door. It was the middle of summer, and my parents had left for the weekend to go to our home in Cape Cod. It's about a two-hour drive away, so it's no big deal for them to leave me at home for a few days. My mum had made some pulled pork and pasta for me to heat up whenever I was hungry, and I had some money if I wanted to order a pizza or something. Things were all good. The first night I was alone, I stayed up until about 3 in the morning playing Xbox, so I woke up really late the next day. I checked my phone when I woke up, and saw it was a little past 1pm. I'd made plans to play some street hockey with a few friends at 3 so I threw myself out of bed and stumbled into the shower. I take really long showers, so when my parents are gone, I go mental. I was in there for about 45 minutes when I heard my back door open. I immediately froze, since obviously I was supposed to be alone. I waited for about two minutes, ears trained in trying to hear anything else. Nothing. 
I figured it was just the wind, or maybe my parents were home early. So I turned off the shower, wrapped my towel around myself, and slowly walked down the stairs to check it out. The bathroom is directly upstairs from the back door, and the thing is pretty loud when it opens and closes. So, the stairs to the kitchen, where the back door is, are pretty tight and walled in, so I can't see into the kitchen when I walk down. Even though my house is old as shit, and each step on the stairs makes a super loud creak, I still took my time, and tried to be as quiet as possible. I probably took 45 seconds walking down all of the 12 stairs. When I get to the second to last stair, right before I could see around the corner into the kitchen, I take a little breath to compose myself. In my mind, I knew I was being stupid. There obviously wasn't anyone in the kitchen. There's no way I wouldn't have already heard another noise. And there's no reason for them to still be in the kitchen, even if there were burglars or something in the house. After sort of mentally chastising myself for being such a wuss, I sort of chuckle to myself for being so stupid, and just normally walk the last two stairs and turn the corner into the kitchen. Standing about two feet away from me, in the middle of the kitchen, is a man staring straight at me, perfectly still, with a massive smile across his face. He's just staring at me. The thing I remember most vividly wasn't his face or his smile, but his arms. They weren't just at his side. He held them in the strangest, most abnormal position I've ever seen. They were where one would normally hold their arms, but he had rotated them to the point where they were almost completely reversed, as well as lifting them up and a little bit behind himself. I don't know why I remember this so much, but it's just the most demonic, abnormal position I've ever seen. Honest to God, I think I almost had a heart attack right there. Looking back, I can realise how fucking creepy this situation was, but in the moment, I just took a step towards him and punched him as hard as I could in the jaw, sort of half slapping, half pushing him towards the ground. The second I connected, I beelined up the stairs, dropping my towel in the kitchen with my heart beating out of control. I fucking sprinted into my room and locked the door behind me. I quickly put a chair up against the doorknob, like you see in TV. Almost without thinking, I immediately called 911, and, nearly in tears, told the operator what happened. As I sat on the floor of my room in practically the fetal position, I noticed that the light coming from the gap between my door had stopped. The fucker was standing outside of my door. There's no words to describe the feeling I had. I was paralysed with fear, watching the shadow across the bottom of my door shift in tiny ways. I stayed balled up, staring at the gap, praying that the man would just go away for what seemed like an hour. All the while, the 911 operator was asking, Hello? Sir? Are you there? Hello? I didn't want to make a noise. And even if I wanted to move my arms to bring the phone up to my mouth, I don't think I could have. Eventually, the light returned to the gap, and I heard the faintest of footsteps slowly creaking the wooden floorboards as he walked down the hall. It was silent for minutes as I just sat there curled up, unable to even speak. Fear does funny things to the body. I heard banging on the front door, and the sound of two officers entering my house. I finally felt safe, and I opened up the door to the two of them standing there. I almost cried. Nowadays, my parents never leave me home alone, thank God, and I check every lock on the house before going to bed. I still get nightmares occasionally, and my heart starts racing whenever I see someone standing still. But I'm doing alright. Even working with sketch artists and a few lineups, the police never found whoever the fuck was in my house. That sends shivers down my spine every time I look outside, half expecting to see him standing across the street, smiling under a lamppost. (laughs) 
A little bit of background information. I'm a 22 year old female, and I just moved to a small town from a big city with my dad. We moved into our house in early October of 2015, and we were having some problems with a leaky shower in the bathroom adjacent to mine. So my dad called up a plumber to come and take a look. The plumber arrived at around 8am the following day, while I was getting ready for work in my bathroom. My dad let him in, so I hadn't gotten a good look at him. My dad then apparently goes down the street to gas up his car and go to work, leaving the plumber to do his job in the bathroom. Now, my bathroom is just a toilet and vanity, with a door leading into a shared shower room that has another door leading into my dad's bathroom. So, while I was getting ready, there was only a door between the plumber and I. I guess he figured out there was a lady in the house due to the sound of my hair dryer. Next thing I know, my bedroom door is opening and closing, and there's a very tall, very wide, very terrifying man with more legs than teeth, locking my door from the inside behind him. He then walks five feet towards me, and stops in front of my bathroom door. I freeze. He stands there, staring at me for the longest 30 seconds of my life. He hits me with the widest, untoothiest grin, and literally looks me up and down multiple times. I hear the front door open and close, not knowing then that my dad had forgotten his wallet, and the plumber pivots on one foot in a twirly motion, and unlocks my door and walks out. My dad runs into my room, asking if that guy had really just been in there, and goes to run after him. But the guy had walked right to his truck, and left without fixing our shower. So, my dad immediately calls up the company we hired him from, and explains to the manager what happened. The manager then proceeds to tell my dad it was our fault that the man locked himself in my room with me, because I hadn't locked him out of my room in the first place. Sorry, I didn't know I had to lock myself away in my own house in order to not be creeped on by a supposed professional. It's just terrifying to think what would have happened if my dad didn't forget his wallet. This story took place in December of last year. My parents took my sisters to my aunt's house, about 30 minutes away from mine, and I didn't want to go, so my parents left me home alone with my dog. It was around 8.30 p.m. and in the winter time, so it was already pitch black by now. I was in the middle of playing a game on my TV in my room when I heard a noise. This was unusual, but being the 15-year-old that I was, I decided not to pay any attention to it. A few minutes later, though, I heard another noise, but it sounded closer. This time I decided to pause my game and go investigate a bit. I did a full sweep of the house and found nothing. This sort of creeped me out, but there wasn't much I could do, so I just went back and kept playing. Some time went by, and I recall the time being around 10.20 p.m. My dog had come up to me and started getting all excited and jumping around for a bit. This was her way of saying that she needed to go to the bathroom, which meant I had to let her outside and then let her back inside when she was done. I was skeptical about this, but I hesitantly took her out to the back of the house to go and let her out. I was about to open the back door when I suddenly got this fearful urge to go and look out the window first. I cautiously looked out the window, making sure to only move the blinds by centimeters. I saw nothing at first, but when I looked at the back of my yard, what I saw made my blood turn to ice. It was a man in his late thirties with a scruffy beard and long disgusting hair, and long disgusting hair looking right at me. I took my dog, locked the door, ran upstairs, and went into the bathroom. Then I locked the door there. I called my parents and they were home in twenty minutes. The cops were called but they never found the guy. I still wonder to this day what would have happened if I didn't look out the window first.
Back when I was 17, my first real girlfriend texted me one night to be like, parents are on a date night, come over and we'll have the place to ourselves. Yep, the text that every young man waits for, the one that makes everything around you glow in gold while you hear the voice of God saying, my son, you have been chosen, now go forth and multiply. I've been planning on a night of modern warfare 3 with the boys, but... Within minutes, I was in the shower scrubbing the enamel off my teeth in order to become a little mint, drowning myself in cologne and raiding my brother's rubber stash for an entire platoon's worth. I remember texting her like, want me to bring anything over? I got a few red barons. And she just replied, nah, just bring yourself. What a feeling, dude. Girlfriend is home alone and all she wants delivered is me. So I rushed to finish off getting dressed spent like five straight minutes in the mirror making sure I look fresh and clean, so fresh and so clean clean, and then I was ready to go. The walk over to my girlfriend's place took like 20 minutes, so from the time of getting the text to me actually arriving couldn't have been any more than an hour. She had one of those long driveways too, not like some southern manor house or anything like that, but enough so you got a long look at the house as you were walking up to it. Then right as I'm about halfway up the driveway, I see someone walking through one of the upstairs bedrooms who was definitely not my girlfriend. I stop dead in my tracks, look up at this guy, and I've got this weird mix of anger and confusion and just utterly feeling a little bit heartbroken. I whip out my phone, dial my girlfriend's number, only to find her phone is switched off. My head is just swimming with negative thoughts. I think I was about to have a panic attack, like I just couldn't believe she'd do that to me. I was checking if I had the right house, double checking the upstairs bedroom, like 100% certain that I'd just seen someone, but also telling myself, no way, I must be hallucinating or something. But nope, that same dude in the green hoodie walks through her parents' bedroom again, like all the way in and then all the way out. But on the way out, he sees me and he stops and stares at me. He's looking at me like, who are you my guy? Where I'm looking at him like, me? Who are you? But as I'm looking I notice there's something weird about his face. It's all distorted. And then it hits me that his face is all distorted because he's wearing like literal pantyhose over his head. Like a meme of a bank robber or something. Then right as I'm thinking like, what kind of weird stuff is this? I'm like, Oh no, he's not a meme. He's literally robbing the place. I just panicked and ran back down the driveway before dialing 911. But then as I'm giving the operator all the details, I realize that my arrival might have prompted something bad to happen to my girlfriend. I ended up running back up the driveway, kicking on the door and shouting up at the window, cops are on their way, you better get out of there. I added a few expletives, but I won't say them here. I didn't hear anyone shouting back. In fact, I couldn't hear anything going on inside at all. But that didn't mean there wasn't anything going on. The intruders, home invaders, whatever you want to call them, they could have been doing anything to my girlfriend in there. And that's if they hadn't done something irreversible already. Waiting those few minutes for the cops to arrive was agony, but the dispatcher promised me that they'd roll up with their lights and sirens blaring to try and scare the intruders off. We later found out that worked like a charm, but no one realized that until we were inside and my girlfriend was safe. She was scared to death, but she was okay, and it turned out that my timing had been absolutely impeccable. The two guys that broke in through the rear door of the house had only just tied her up in her bedroom and were right in the middle of ransacking the house when I showed up. And yes, they were actually wearing pantyhose. Seems kind of ridiculous, but the cops told me it's the smart choice for home invaders, I guess. You get pulled over with a ski mask in your passenger seat in Florida, questions are going to be asked. But a pair of pantyhose, you could just shrug it off and say, oh, that's just Mima's laundry day or something, and there's no probable cause. Needless to say, when the cops left, we were way too shaken up for any alone time and my girlfriend was in no mood to hang out at a place that had just gotten broken into, so we ended up going back to my parents' place to hang out. Nothing in the way of privacy, so I didn't get the 
explosive evening I'd been hoping for, but still, it was just cool to have been the one to have saved her, as she put it. I didn't save anyone. Those dudes only bailed when the cops showed up, but still, you can bet I took all the credit she wanted to give me. We ended up dating until maybe our sophomore year of college. After that, neither of us could handle the distance, but we still keep in touch and I'm pretty sure our little post-relationship friend status is rooted solely in that mild shared trauma of having confronted a pair of home invaders together. <laughs> 